what we would consider more of the meta Ice Rider Calyrex. Ice Rider Calyrex is going to be very vulnerable on Diego's side to have to kind of rely on some of its partners like this Ogre Pond Wellspring that it's going to be next to to use something with redirection like Follow Me. That's available here as well as on that Ndidi if we see it a little bit later. But for Antonio, the Ice Rider Calyrex nowhere to be seen as of yet. Instead, the Raging Bolt and the Ogre Pond Cornerstone. Yes, nice to see the special attack boost as well on Antonio's Raging Bolt, using that boost to energy to get that boost in play. It also has the formidable pressure it can go for that Terror Electric. You can see Antonio hesitating over that, wanting to deal as much damage as possible with these Electric Time moves. The Ogre Pond, as you said here, Rosemary, can be very disruptive with that Follow Me, and it's such a reasonably bulky Pokemon as well, and can threaten Pokemon like the Ogre Pond with some damage with the Ivy Cudgel. You want to try and eliminate it from play. I do not think Antonio has the utility to stop Trick Room at this point. It's going to go up, so now you just need to get some KOs on the board. Well, I love the coverage that we're going to see Antonio go for here. With this Raging Bolt going to that Terra Electric, you are able to mitigate the weakness that from something like this Ice Rider Calyrex is not going to be super effective damage anymore into that Dragon Typing. But because Diego does have this Wellspring Ogre Pond that can use the Follow Me, it's oh. going to have to redirect away the attacks. But Ivy Cudgel, it has that increased critical hit chance, and that's going to be a one-hit knockout, leaving this Ice Rider Calyrex very vulnerable to this special attack booster energy, Terra Electric. Thunderball. That does so much damage. Ivy Cudgel coming through, getting the knockout. One Ogre Pond into the other Cornerstone saying, I am the victor out of the two of us and allowing the Raging Bolt to get some good damage down onto that Restricted on the opposing side. Yes, Trick Room has gone up now. That means the speed will be in Diego's favor, but at what cost, Rosemary? There is at least a free switch here for Diego. The Ice Rider Calyrex is still up. It's going to be one of the slowest things in, or one of the fastest things in this trick room now that that's set up. And you have the Ndidi as well. Setting the Psychic Surge means that you can protect this Ice Rider Calyrex from these priority attacks, such as the Thunderclap on this Raging Bolt. And you also have that additional protection in the Follow Me. Yes, Follow Me once again providing that redirection support, enabling Calyrex to be in a position where it can go for a Glacial Lance, start getting some good damage on the board. Raging Bolt having dropped its dragon typing, not going to worry about those too much at this point, particularly as Grimne is not coming through. There is a protect option on both of these Pokemon though, but it's not going to be seen as of yet. The Ndidi going for the follow me first, and the Glacial Lance to follow. Both of these Pokemon are going to take a decent chunk of damage. Ogre Pond with its sturdy ability though, is going to hold on for this next attack and also be able to deliver another blow. The Driggle Meteor though, is going to get redirected away. The Ndidi, not going to be knocked out quite yet, but this Raging Bolt, it's just been so instrumental in this matchup so far for Antonio. And while this Ice Rider Calyrex has the opportunity to attack again, that's another knockout that Antonio's taken. Two moves and two KOs coming through for this corner po um, Cornerstone Ogre Pond here. Really, really nice damage on the board. Now we are going to see one of the titans of Trick Room, the Urs of Luna, coming into play. The issue that you've got to contend with, though, is Trick Room turns are going to start coming through. And if Antonio wants to play around that, you have some defensive capabilities to utilize. I feel like if you're Diego, though, you need to go again for this Glacial Lance, get some damage on the board. You can, I believe, easily get the two-hit KO here um, on both Raging Bolt and the Ogre Pond. So that could then get you two Chilling Nay boosts. It could. The only problem is that, as you mentioned, for some of those defensive plays, Antonio does have the option to just double protect on both of these Pokemon. Mm -hmm. It's going to stall out an additional turn of Trick Room and make sure that this Ursa Luna isn't going to actually have the speed advantage. It's also going to be really tough. You know, this Ursa Luna has the opportunity to go for Earthquake, and so when you talk about being able to secure a double knockout, do you actually try to give the KOs over to your Ice Rider Calyrex, or just allow your Ursa Luna to try to get the job done? But Imprison here, how interesting. Just making sure that you're going to be able to go for something here. But with the Earthquake coming through, uh, that or the Headlong Rush, excuse me, actually just attacks, attacks in general. Well, I really like this coming through, actually. You know, you do get a little bit of damage onto your partner, Calyrex here, but it is able to hang on. And the critical thing for Ursa Luna is you've taken that one turn, you've been able to use the Flame Orb to now activate your Guts ability. So there is going to be so much more offensive pressure coming through from Ursa Luna. The Earthquake, yes, you hit your partner Pokemon, but you might have been able to get some good damage on a switch in from the back. You know, if it was just something like the Urshifu, at least you're getting the Focus Sash broken and then leaving it more vulnerable for Antonio. 
uh, the, the imprison, I think that's a, a very interesting move choice. Maybe yeah. expecting that there was some type of the trick room option in, in the back. Yeah, maybe you do have that Calyrex, but as we actually saw in the back there, no Calyrex, no Farigarath. So very interesting adjustment here for Antonio in this very first game. Relying once again on kind of a similar strategy we saw in just our previous match. This Raging Bolt can be so dominant when you're able to put on that pressure. We saw the Earthquake come through from the Ursa Luna in this previous turn. One way to disrupt that, <laughs> you have the grassy terrain on your side. But with the Thunderclap, this Calyrex just goes down without a fight. That's one way to get around the speed tiers of a Trick Room going for your priority move. There's no fur grab on Diego's side, so you do not have to worry about Armatel blocking it as the Headland Rush comes through. Oh no, that was the Facade coming through from the Ursa Luna to remove the Pokemon from play. So you do manage to get a KO on Diego's side, but now on Antonio's side, you get to bring a Pokemon in from the back and start slowing things down once again. You can go for some more Protects, just stall through these remaining Trick Room turns. Oh. I lied. The, it is there. Raging it's just neck was good. <laughs> Raging Bolt's neck was a little bit of a hazard there. But yeah. Ogapon, one of your favorites, is back on the field here. And again, Ogapon in a position where it can go for some, you know, potential redirection with the follow me, forcing, I suppose, the Ursa Luna to go for its only spread move here in the form of the Earthquake to try and get some damage on the board. Not too much longer here for this Ursa Luna to try to get the take advantage of these speed turns, especially when you're going to see the double protect from this Raging Bolt and the Ogre Pond. It's going to stall out that final turn of Trick Room. Really, this Ursa Luna doesn't have any other option except to try to go for the Earthquake, try to secure that double knockout. But it, it is going to be tough now knowing that once this Trick Room expires, you are going to see that Ice Rider Calyrex come in. Exactly, Ursa Luna does struggle outside of Trick Room, and particularly when you've got so many Pokemon on the opposing side, it makes it very, very difficult in the kind of 1v Ulla Pokemon matchup for Ursa Luna. The Twisted Dimensions have now ended, so the speed is back into Ogopon's favor. It can always just try and go here for a Power Whip just to get some damage down using that powerful Grass type attack. And Raging Bolt can kind of do its thing, obviously. It doesn't want to go for any of these Electric type moves, and Illa Draco Media will be able to do some good damage. Well, you saw the coverage there. It was just <laughs> to make sure that you could cover for the Terra option. You don't need it, though, because the Power Whip is plenty to knock out this Ursa Luna. And so Antonio, pretty commanding fashion there, able to deal with those Trick Room turns and get the win for this game number one. Do you know what I really liked about Antonio's play was the fact that Calyrex Ice Rider was hidden in the back until later. It didn't just come out front and center. He kind of accepted, hey, Trick Room is going to go up, so I need to play defensively. You have your very bulky Raging Bolt on there that's able to take a lot of attacks. You drop the Dragon Typing so you're not weak to the opposing Calyrex, but not only that, you have the Ogre Pond with that sturdy ability, giving you that flexibility to be able to hang on after one big attack. Speaking of hanging on from attacks, Ogre can also deal them out. These Ivy Cudgels were ferocious. Big damage with that critical hit, and I think you needed the critical hit to be able to get the KO there. Yeah, if not, I mean, this Ice Rider Calyrex goes into those Trick Room turns much more healthy, yeah. able to stack up those Glacial Lances, potentially even get a boost with that Chilling Nay, and really just uh, wreak havoc in that Trick Room environment. Unfortunately, though, this Raging Bolt able to put on a little bit too much damage with that very first Thunderbolt, and not too much longer for Diego in that first game. That is just the first game, though. It Maybe is. the game plan can still work. You just hope that that Ogre Pond is up for a little bit longer. I would almost like to see from Diego's side the Trick Room being set up by a Pokemon that isn't your restricted. You know, allowing that to come onto the field once Trick Room is up with that full HP bar intact, enabling you to have that bulk to maybe take an attack or two and deal a huge amount of damage out. Now, Indeedy was brought to that match. Maybe Indeedy could have the potential to get that Trick Room set up, but there is also the Gallade option. Mm, yeah, Gally would be very interesting. I think this is a Pokemon we don't get a chance to see too often on the stream just because it is a little bit shoved into the box of having to be on a full hard trick room team. True. Uh, but it does have the Psychic Seed as its held item, so a great way to be able to pair that next to something like the Ndidi. But you also have like Sacred Sword, Psycho Cut as your moves of choice, alongside Wide Guard. Maybe not necessarily a bad option to have uh, against maybe the Ice Rider Calyrex, but Gale could struggle a little bit when it comes down to do you find yourself in front of the right targets with something like the Sacred Sword? I mean, in the mirror, Diego has a lot of utility. We've already seen that in prison on the Calyrex to be able to try and shut down opposing Calyrexes, but you do also have that wide guard. But it looks like the same combinations coming out front and center here. Raging Bolt and Cornerstone Ogapon against the Wellspring Ogapon and the Calyrex Ice Rider. Run it back, just no crit this time. Oh, I let's see what happens. <laughs> The booster energy again going to show off that this Raging Bolt is going to get that special attack boost and that first turn of the first game. We did see this Raging Bolt go for the Electric Terra just to be able to boost up those Electric Tip attacks even further. 
Um, so maybe that is going to be a repeat here as Antonio looks for the next turn of the game. I mean, again, Ogapon might want to go on the offensive here as well. It has the potential to deal out some good damage with an Ivy Cudgel of its own or even the Woodhammer just to get some good damage onto the field. But I think the key thing is you need to be able to support this Calyrex. If it is staying in, if it's not going to be, it can't go for Protect anyway because it's not running it, you need to provide that defensive support. The Terrestrialization, as you said, Rosemary, going down once again onto this Raging Bolt. It's both offensive and defensive to drop that Dragon Typing in the face of an Ice-type Pokemon as Ogapon goes for the Follow Me. But will it be able to stay on the field? That is the question, right? Because last time it did get crit, so the Ivy Cudgel, if it doesn't crit again, this Ogre Pond survives beautifully. No damage going to be taken on this Ice Rider Calyrex as the Thunderbolt also gets redirected. So while you do have to sacrifice this Ogre Pond, it is for the greater good. An opportunity here for this Ice Rider Calyrex to set up this Trick Room and really get things going. This is what I wanted to see, though. The Calyrex Ice Rider in Trick Room with that HP bar intact, enabling it to have that extra longevity on the field. And now the tide's really have turned. You can go for these Glacial Lancers, you can do a huge amount of damage and apply a lot of pressure, and you've got your Ursaluna in nice and safe. Ursaluna, once again, in a position where it could just go for that Protect and ensure a very safe Flame Orb Guts boost, or because you know that speed is kind of in your favor and the Raging Bolt can't really go for the Thunderclap into the Ursaluna, of course, then you can go for something like the Headlong Rush just to be able to get some damage on the board against Raging Bolt. Would be nice to do that. I think the only issue here for Diego is the fact that this Calyrex, as we mentioned before, does not have access to Protect. Mm -hmm. So it might be a little telegraphed here that Diego would like to get that Guts boost up and running. But even in that last game, Diego was very comfortable to try yeah. to go for an attack and just let that Guts boost come up naturally for this Ursaluna. It makes him less readable as well, right? If you kind of think, oh, it's going to go for that Protect, that's what it always does. So you're not going to target into it. Enables it just to get some damage on the board. And obviously, it's not as destructive as it is when it has the Guts Boost, but there is a Terrestrialization. It is the Dragon type onto this opposing Calyrex. Wow, haven't seen that in a while. We have not seen that in a while. That is one of the ways you can get around a lot of this sort of elemental damage yes. that could be coming through that, you know, Ice Rare Calyrex, maybe not worried too much about seeing a Will-O-Wisp across the way instead. But wow, look at oh. that. It's gonna be that long rush there into this Raging Bull. It is a one-hit knockout. The Ursaluna is going to get the drops in its defense, its special defense, uh, as you would see from something like a close combat. But I think you got the prize. You need to calm down, Ursaluna. That is so much damage, and they're not even guts boosted at this point in time. Calyrex going for the Imprison. That shows exactly why the Thunderclap did indeed fail into that slot, as Ursaluna not only gets the KO, but gets the boost now, thanks to that Flame Orb. A fantastic turn here for Diego. Now Antonio, this time, has indeed left the Calyrex Ice Rider at home, as well as the Ferrograph, and has brought these kind of iconic duos in the form of Rillaboom and Urshifu to the field. Rillaboom can come, try and slow down the pace a little bit with something like a potential fake out, just stall through a couple of these turns. And Urshifu can deal, obviously, a huge chunk of damage with something like a close combat or a surging strikes. But this Dragon Terror is so critical. Fire, water, grass is not going to be dealing damage to this Calyrex. So that's when you look at this Rapid Strike Urshifu mm -hmm. and you go, oh no, this Surging Strikes maybe not necessarily the easiest thing to take out this Calyrex. You still have the Close Combat, which is going to pack a big punch. But when this Ursaluna is sitting there, you, you think about this Urshifu and you go, okay, this is really the target that I'd like to see. Both of these are going to be super effective mm -hmm. into this Ursaluna. Exactly. And the Ursaluna, you know, having taken some drops, is going to be a little bit more vulnerable. But Glacial Lance is going to come through first of all. Ogapon taken right down to its sturdy one HP remaining. And Urshifu is not going to be able to hang on to a follow up from this Ursaluna or even a second Glacial Lance in the next turn. Oh, that critical hit. That's going to make that much more difficult. But the facade actually goes into this Cornerstone Ogapon instead, finishing the job that this Ice Rider Calyrex could not in that first turn. It unfortunately denies that boost to the Chilling Nay. But with this close combat in response, this Ursaluna is also going to get taken out of the fight. So critical survival there on that Urshifu to be able to deliver up that finishing blow. Diego is going to be down to his final two Pokemon and Antonio Sanchez as well. I think this is a nice trade though, however, because your Ursaluna had those drops. It was going to be a little bit more vulnerable. This is another perfect partner Pokemon for this Calyrex Ice Rider. And that's where you're going to shift your focus of your Diego. You can use this Calyrex to be able to start cleaning up this game. The Rillabooms come onto the field, but the key thing is that Indeedee is here as well, can go for that redirection. Rillaboom though in Trick Room, not going to enable the Psychic Train in there. So Fake Out is still a potential play. Exactly, because of the speed interactions there, exactly. Rillaboom gets a chance to set that grassy terrain a little bit later, and that means that you can still go for something like the, the Aqua Jet even, or that grassy glide, absolutely, alongside something like that fake out. But still, 
How do you get through this Ice Rider Calyrex? Grass type damage. You also have the, the water type damage. Now you have to rely on things that are a little bit more chunky, but can this Urshifu actually tank another hit? Can you get through these mm -hmm. Trick Room turns? It's not even that. It's getting through the Ndidi as well, because you can go for the Follow Me, and both the Rillaboom and the Urshifu only really have single target type attacks. So you can try all you want to get to that Calyrex, but indeed he's going to be the barrier stopping you in this case. Calyrex going for the flinch, did get hit by the fake out here, as Urshifu actually just goes straight away for the close combat, indeed he taking that like a champ. Yeah, it's going to need another one to be able to get the job done, and all the while, Antonio is actually going to be dropping his own defensive mm -hmm. capabilities against this Ice Rider Calyrex, and you also took a bit of chip damage from the Rocky Helmet that this indeed is holding, going to make it a little bit easier for this Urshifu to get taken out, even though we saw the critical hit take it below half. There is helping hand available on this Ndidi if you just want to clean up shop. <laughs> exactly, because I'm not sure even if Rillaboom and Urshifu were able to double down into that Calyrex, whether they would be able to get the job done. Urshifu going on the defensive here as the Rillaboom does go for that priority Grassy Glide, but it's not enough to get the Ndidi. It's still hanging on here. The Rocky Helmet doing a little bit of chip in return, but Calyrex, the lights are on you now. This is your moment to go for this Glacial Lands into the opposing Rillaboom here. Being a grass type, it's going to be very vulnerable to this attack. Yes, that is just going to be what I would essentially call a one-hit knockout. It's gone. Onto the Rillaboom <laughs> might have damaged itself in the process, but it's going to be another boost here for this Calyrex. And the heal oh. pulse as well. That is another move that Zendidi can use to really just uh, continue to keep this Ice Runner Calyrex healthy. It didn't have too much damage on top of it just yet, but now even outside of Trick Room, a close combat to this Calyrex might be a stretch and a half. This was such a beautiful play by Diego as well, going for that heal pulse, knowing that, hey, if the damage comes down into this Calyrex, it's bulky enough, it's got the defensive capabilities with the Dragon type to be able to withstand anything. But when Trick Room's over, that's where things can get dicey, so I'm going to go for that heal pulse. And I really, really love the way that Diego has played that, keeping the Calyrex as the center point, making sure that it's got high HP, it's protected constantly. And even though at some point this was us, Luna's game, it was the one that you were focusing on, Calyrex is the one clean sweeping out this game too. Really is. Uh, and I think Antonio is just thinking at this point, what do you do heading into this third and final game? Yes. You were able to make the most of what you were granted in that first game, still having to find a way to really be able to, to get there in the first place and still take advantage of that critical hit. But uh, Diego at this point, got to start thinking about, you know, can I get through this? There is maybe an, an out here in terms of the amount of power points you have for a Glacial Lance, it's only eight. Is that possible? A double protect? It could be a way of kind of counting through against this Calyrex, but Calyrex still has a lot of utility to be able to do damage still with. You know, high horsepower that's thing, the high horsepower, as long as it connects, you know, dare I say it, it's going to be able to get the job done against the Urshifu. And even if the Calyrex isn't able to get the job done, you know, Ndidi providing that support, the redirection, it's going to be able to enable that. Obviously, Ndidi doesn't have any attacking moves, so you really are going to be focusing down against that Calyrex, but I think with the full HP remaining, it's going to be a really, really tall order. It is. Maybe even thinking about how much time is left in the game. I don't know. I'm just, I'm just trying to think oh. of these scenarios here if Antonio's not just thinking about what to do in this game three. Well, he's definitely using that time, and I think it is a very wise thing to do to start thinking about how to adapt, because at the end of the day, this Calyrex, when it goes into this Dragon Terror, is so difficult to get through. You almost kind of want to go through and go for the Glacial Lance into it, because it will deal super effective damage, but that Imprison is so detrimental to Antonio's potential here. The Glacial Lance is going to come through. The failed third protect will be able to get the knockout on Earth and we're going to see a game three here in Swiss round 10 at the Pokemon World Championships. Wow, what a set so far. Diego has been so successful with this hard trick room team with the Ice Rider Calyrex, and you're absolutely right. That's kind of why in that first game I went, no, oh, surely there's not an Ice Rider Calyrex yeah. in the back here for Antonio, but it was great that there was, because when you do see that in prison come out, that is something that you have to worry about versus opposing Ice Rider Calyrex. They've been plentiful in the meta. Mm -hmm. And you completely shut down Antonio's one hit, Glacial Lance, High Hulse Power, Trick Room. Those are the three moves that you have in common. So all Calyrex can then do is protect. You can basically ignore it on the field and always focus down that partner slot. We saw again the opening turn here, big damage, losing the Ogre Pond, but Ogre Pond does its job. It just enables that safe Trick Room setup for the Calyrex. Yes, you're going to see some big damage coming through from the Ursaluna as well, but it really is all about that Calyrex at the end of the day. Being able to have that in prison, really threatening Antonio and completely neutralizing one of his big restricted Pokemon. It's also very good information for Antonio to, to know that, okay, even without that Guts boost, yes. Headlong Rush 
It's a one-hit knockout. My Raging Bolt is not going to be able to survive that. Uh, so now maybe you have to kind of think about, okay, is there an opportunity then instead to maybe put the Rillaboom in, even if you have, does that buy you enough time? Maybe in D swaps in for something. Got the grassy terrain as well to protect your Pokemon from something like an earthquake. Just thoughts. I'm almost thinking if there's any way here to be able to try and shut down Trick Room so it doesn't go up. But with that Imprison on there, you know, if you're leading that Calyrex Ice Rider, sure, you can bring your own Frigograph, try and reverse it with the Trick Room on Antonio's side. But if Imprison is what's locked in, then there's no room for you to maneuver here. And then you're in a very, very difficult spot. With that Dragon Typing as well, as you said, Rosemary, it's such a good defensive capability in a sea at the moment where we've got a lot of Firewater Grass cores. And Pokemon like the Rillaboom and the Urshifu that Antonio keeps bringing just do not have the power to be able to get the damage down, particularly when Diego is using so many great supportive Pokemon, Ogapon and Indeedee. I was going to say, though, if the Ice Rider Calyrex is forced into a position where it is going for Imprison, it's, then it's not going for something else. That is true. So there's no attack coming out. There's also not going to be a Trick Room of its own. So maybe that is something you could potentially capitalize on. So I love where you're going with this, mm. thinking about the Furigraph and putting an offensive Pokemon next to it just to try to get some damage down or just force a moot turn. As we head into this game number three, though, the winner of this game is going to move on with a win into the final round of Swiss and look, dude, look at that. Lou's gonna be a run back for Diego with the Ice Rider Calyrex and Ogre Pond Wellspring. But for Antonio, it's the Ogre Pond next to the Furgaraf. The Furgaraf has come to play here in this game three, being able to provide just a little bit of support with something like maybe the Trick Room or even using that throw straight to boost up. It's Hyper Voice getting some damage out on the field. You've also got the capability of Shadow Ball to deal some pretty good damage into the opposing Calyrex but it really comes down to whether you can get damage onto Calyrex and stop it going for this Trick Room. We know that the Ogapon Cornerstone has the capability if it gets a critical hit to remove the Ogapon from play on the opposing side, but now Calyrex has a choice to make. Does it go for Trick Room or does it go for Imprison? I feel like Trick Room is still a very good bet to be able to make. You want to make sure that you have that as a speed advantage for yourself, but it's a tough call. I feel like you are put in a very precarious position if you're Diego by this lead from Antonio. You at least see the follow me once again. So the Ivy Cudgel heading into this Ogre Pond. It's not going to be a critical hit either this time. So Ogre Pond's going to be able to hold on, not through this Hyper Voice though. So while it does get knocked out for troubles, what did Diego end up going for here on this Calyrex? after we get to see this Throat Stripe boost here for the Furgaraf. Yeah, Furgaraf kind of setting itself up here, getting a boost to its special attack, as Calyrex does indeed go for the Trick Room. I guess you're in a position in that next turn where you can just go for the Imprison now as well and stop Furgaraf from trying to reverse the Trick Rooms here. I always wondered as well if Calyrex was just going to go on the all-out offensive there, go for a Glacial Glance and get some big damage down, but Trick Room really is the arena where Diego thrives. Ursa Luna now on the field as well, and this is where Calyrex maybe can go for that Imprison, allowing Ursa Luna to go for the big damage on the field. The issue is there is no Rage bolt that you're down against now and terrestrialization is still flexible on Antonio's side. Yes, and I love that because as we talked about before, this Furgraph does have access to that Terra Water and that's one of the ways you could resist some of this damage mm -hmm. from this Ice Rider Calyrex while still being able to make use of something like the Throat Spray that you have activated your, for yourself on that first turn. Ogre Pond as well for Antonio. Let's not forget that while it is a cornerstone and it has the ability to go out on offense, it also does have access to follow me as well. One of the ways you could also redirect away a big attack from that Ursaluna. But as Diego did in that second game, it's going to be another Terra into the Dragon type for this Ice Rider Calyrex. And while it's still got the Sturdy intact as well, the Cornerstone Ogopon is going to be able to hang around on the field a little bit. But let's bring a little bit of glimmer and shine to the stage as well. Both terrestrializations coming through. It is going to be that Water Terra on the Frigoraph to give it a lot more defensive potential here on the field. That also really helps it out against Pokemon like the Ursaluna. Ursaluna is going to go straight away for the headlong rush. Looks like a really nice defensive typing switch here, but oh my goodness, that still does so much damage. Frigoraph is definitely more vulnerable now as the Glacial Lance follows up. The Glacial Lance, though, with this Water Terra is not going to be nearly enough to get this knockout onto the Furgaraf, which means that you actually have an opportunity to get some damage down if you are Antonio. The Hyper Voice, Ursa Luna had dropped its special defense using that Headlong Rush, but it is going to be the power up to follow up just to make sure that that Ursa Luna is absolutely down for the count. No Guts activation since the Flame Orb 
is gone alongside that Ursaluna. Even without the drops there, that would have done so much damage from the Power Whip coming through. Indeedy, however, now can come onto the field, bring that Psychic Terrain in, and once again provide that redirection support with something like a Follow Me. Both Frigoraf and Okapon generally will get drawn into attacks except for that Hyper Voice, and you can see how much damage it is stacking up against this Calyrex. Unless Calyrex is able to get some KOs, which I'm pretty sure it's going to be able to do looking at the very, very low HP bars on Frigoraf and Ogopom, it can then start getting its attack boosted as well through these Chilling Nays and become very formidable. Antonio needs to play the clock a little bit here and look at these Trick Room turns. I think it's tough as well because even though we saw how much damage that Kylorex could do with that Glacial Lance, now you have a different modifier you have to think about. Do you actually survive the Glacial Lance if this Indeedee goes for a Follow Me? They would be able to get a double knockout, but that is why we see Antonio just try to opt for the spiky shield onto the Ogre Pond. That way you are at least denying one of those boosts. Let's see though, there was no helping hand. It's just gonna be the Glacial Lance here from this Calyrex, but it is enough knowing that you are gonna be able to secure a knockout there. Wouldn't be surprised to see the heal pulse come through here as well, just to give that Calyrex a little bit more longevity and help it out because it has to take a couple of those hyper voices as well as giving itself a chilling nay boost, boosting up its attack and there it comes through the heal pulse. One of the best buddies you can have by your side in the form of this Indeedee. It just completely undoes all of that hard work that Antonio was trying to do onto that Ice Rider just a couple of turns ago. But as you see the Rillaboom come in, now that Diego is down to his final two Pokemon, the terrain control is at the very least in Antonio's favor. Yes, and you do have the fake out potential here as well because the Grassy Terrain is overwritten the Psychic Terrain. You can go for these priority attacks. And we know how much damage Rillaboom is capable of dealing, particularly when using these Grass Time moves to boost up its, you know, Grassy Glides. But that's only going to really affect Pokemon like Indeedee. Calyrex is still going to be so difficult to get through. You might even need to use the Ogre Pond to try and get another critical hit with something like the Ivy Cudgel into that slot. But you cannot get around the Indeedee safely. You can't. So that's why Antonio gets a chance to try to make the most out of this turn. You get the fake out into the Ice Rider Calyrex. Make sure you can at least stop one more turn of damage, try to buy your time past these Trick Room turns, and just hope you got the damage down onto this Indeedy. Ogre Front still has a lot of fight left in it, and with the power up, it is going to connect. So Indeedy yes. just gets knocked out in one hit. That's going to leave this Calyrex vulnerable here for Diego as these Trick Room turns start to expire. Who needs the critical hit when you can use the Grassy Terrain to boost up your Grass type attacks as well? The one issue, however, is you power whip down into a Rocky Helmet. That is going to be the last little bit of damage on this Ogre Pond. But now Antonio has the free switch, brings in a Pokemon like the Urshifu here. But one once again, we're in this situation, Rosemary. We've got the Calyrex versus two Pokemon that really cannot do a lot of damage to it. But this time, Calyrex does not have a supportive Pokemon by its side. Does it have enough gas in the tank to be able to hang on against both of these formidable attackers? Well, you know that this Urshifu will be able to survive one more Glacial Lands as the Grassy Glide does not do a little bit more than a tickle. And response to the Glacial Lands for Rillaboom, at least you get some damage down before it does get down, down and out for the count. But this Urshifu has a chance here. Can it do enough damage with this close combat that you can put yourself in a position where a second one's going to be able to do the job? It all comes down to this, Lou. Can Urshifu do it? Close combat comes through, connects, does a little bit of damage, puts it down into the orange zone here. But the Cal Rex looking so in control. It's going to be close, especially after a bit of that grassy terrain yes. recovery. That's going to make that damage roll even a little bit more different. Close combat once again, but now this Calyrex is going to be at plus two when it goes for another Glacial Lance. Antonio has the speed now. This Urshifu is going to move first. Urshifu has to get the KO, otherwise it is Diego's game here. Calyrex hangs on, able to go with the Glacial Lance down into the opposing Urshifu, dropping its special defense and defense defense even more and here it comes through gets the knockout Diego Ferreira victorious in this set victorious in the set and we get a chance to see if he can be victorious once again in that top cut fantastic play from Diego 